Good morning, my Saturday school friends. I miss you so much, and I hope that you are having a good summer. Just for fun, I'm going to wave at you, and feel free to wave back at me, and, and just pretend you're waving at some of your other friends as we join together in our Saturday, our summer Saturday school. Today we're going to learn about how God is encouraging. This is one of my favorite lessons about God, that no matter what we're going through, no matter when times are difficult, God will be encouraging and God will send encouragement. So as we realize this, then we are able to encourage one another. So that's our lesson for today. God is encouraging and so we are encouraging as well. We're going to learn about one of the stories of Paul. Paul wrote a lot of letters in the New Testament and did a lot of ministry for Jesus in the New Testament. And today we're going to learn about how Paul encouraged a whole group of people in the middle of a storm. I have a question for you. If you could sail or swim or just sit on the side of the shore, what would be your favorite thing of those three to do? Sail or swim or just sit on the side soaking in the sun? You know, sailing is so much fun because you feel the power of the wind moving your boat and you have to navigate with the wind, that's fun. Swimming is fun because when you swim, you feel the strength of your own muscles as it pulls you through the water. And of course, sitting on the side of the beach is fun too, especially when you're yearning for the brightness of the sun and the warmth of the sun. So one of my goals is to learn how to sail. So I think I would choose sailing today because I don't know how to sail and I would love to learn how to sail. But what would you do? Would you rather sail or swim or sit on the side of the shore, maybe even play in the sand? You know, none of those activities uh, we're going to be safe in the story that we're going to look at today because Paul and some other prisoners were in a ship and there was a violent storm. So it wasn't safe to be at sea. It wasn't going to be safe to swim in the sea. And even on shore, it was going to be a little bit dangerous. But we're going to see how God encouraged Paul and then how God sent that encouragement and how we can encourage one another. So let's begin with a time of prayer together. Would you pray with me? Lord, the psalmist says that you bend your ear down and you listen to us. Lord, we have so many things that we would hope that you would hear from us and so many ways that we wish you would help us to be encouraged. Help us to know that no matter what is going on, no matter what disappointments we have in life, no matter what challenges we have, that you will encourage us. And as you encourage us, we're able to encourage one another. Bless us as we share in this summer Saturday school today. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's Bible story of encouragement comes to us from the book of Acts, which is in the New Testament, the 27th chapter of the book of Acts. Before our Bible story, Paul was put into prison because he was telling people about Jesus. And in today's story, Paul and several, several other prisoners are put on a boat and they are being shipped, literally, to Italy. So we're going to read this story of Paul's being encouraged by God in the middle of all of this. Soon, strong winds started blowing and it was hard to keep the ship on course. 
They tried to stay in the middle of the sea so they wouldn't crash into land when the wind blew. They sailed very slowly and tried to stop at one place, but the wind blew them to another place. They struggled against the wind, trying not to crash into the coast. By now, their journey had taken longer than it should have. It was late fall and more storms would be coming. It was a dangerous time to travel. So Paul had an idea. Everyone, I think if we go on, we'll be in trouble. We might shipwreck, lose cargo, and put our lives in danger. Let's stop here. Since Paul was just a prisoner, the officer in charge of the prisoners decided not to listen to him. Instead, he listened to the ship's captain and kept going. They were in a harbor that was a bad place to spend the winter, so they decided to keep going. That's when things got really bad. They pulled up anchor and started sailing along the shore again. But when the wind changed into a typhoon, the ship was blown out to sea. The waves were so high. Some of the sailors got aboard the lifeboat behind the ship so they could tie ropes around the base of the ship to make it stronger. The next day they set sail again, but the winds and waves were so strong. The crew tried to make the ship lighter by throwing cargo overboard. They even threw over important ship's gear, but it didn't help. Listen to how bad things were. When neither the sun nor the moon appeared for many days, the raging storm continued to pound us. All hope of our being saved from this peril faded. The storm raged on. Everyone was scared and hungry. But then God sent an angel to give Paul an encouraging message. Paul, don't be afraid. You'll get to Italy and stand trial. In fact, God will keep everyone on your boat safe. God is encouraging, so we encourage others. That's what happened in the Bible after God encouraged Paul. Paul told the rest of the passengers about God's encouragement. Paul told everyone not to be afraid, and he said that although the ship would go down, everyone would be safe. But the storm wasn't over. In fact, the boat was blown so close to the shore that when they measured it, the water was only 90 feet deep. It wouldn't be long before they crashed into the rocks. It was night, and with the clouds covering the moon, it was so dark, they prayed for daylight. They also tried to abandon ship. They lowered lifeboats to get on them, but Paul told them if anyone got off the boat, they would die. So they cut the lifeboats away and stayed on the ship. As the day dawned, Paul told everyone to eat. They hadn't eaten in two weeks and they were getting weak. He reminded them not to worry because no one would die. Paul knew that God is encouraging and he encouraged the others. After eating, they threw the extra food overboard to lighten the ship even more. As the sun rose higher, they saw a beach and thought maybe they could crash the ship into it. But they hit a pile of rocks underwater and crashed the ship too early. The soldiers wanted to kill the prisoners so they wouldn't swim to shore and escape, but the commanding officer said no. So everyone swam or held onto pieces of wood from the broken ship 
and floated safely to shore. God is encouraging and we encourage others. God told Paul his plan to keep everyone safe. And Paul shared that plan with the others on the boat. Think of something encouraging you know about God. There's a beautiful psalm, and I invite you to ask your moms and dads to look it up at your home. It's Psalm 139, and it talks about the fact that we, don't, we can't go anywhere where God isn't with us. God is with us everywhere we go, and no matter what's going on in our lives. And that is so encouraging to know we're not alone. So maybe that's one thing we can encourage others with. We can share with them that God is with us no matter where we are and no matter what is going on. When we face scary times like Paul did on that ship, it's easy to focus on our fears. But when we remember God's encouragement, then we can take the focus off of those fears and we can trust in God. Because again, remember, God is encouraging. We can receive that encouragement and we can encourage one another. So today we're going to look at how encouraging words can be helpful as an object lesson. I have two plates here. I have this blue plate and then I have this clear plate with a sticker on it. I'm going to put the clear plate on top and I want to see how easy it is to move the clear plate around. So I put this sticker here so I'm trying to pull it with my finger. It's not smooth at all and it takes a lot of work. I think our top plate needs a little lift. I'm going to put five marbles onto this plate and see if the marbles can help encourage the top plate to spin a little bit better. So when I do this, yep, it encourages it to spin a little bit better, but because I don't, well, Esri, what do you think? Hmm? Are you going to move out of the way? Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's lopsided and so we have an issue. So I think we need to add even more marbles. Let's see what happens when I add the whole bag of marbles. Dump them onto the plate. Aren't those pretty colors? We're going to put the plate on top. Now let's see. Yep, that makes the plate spin a whole lot easier. With more marbles, the plate spins easier. And that's the same way with encouragement. When we're facing something really difficult, the more encouragement we can receive, the more our spirits feel lifted, and the more we know we can accomplish whatever task or do whatever thing it is that we need to do. So let us and our words be like these marbles that help to lift people's spirit and help encourage one another. So at the end of our Bible story, Paul's ship crashed and everyone had to swim to shore or hold on to a piece of wood and float to shore, a piece of wood from the cracked ship. So I have a craft stick here and we're going to pretend that this is a piece of wood from the crashed ship or whatever's crashed in our own lives. And I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to write uh, a prayer request onto this stick. And um, 
So I wrote my prayer request on to the stick. I just wrote a word, transitions, because there's a lot of transitions that are going to be happening in my life and in the lives of those I love. So that's a prayer request that I have. And I know that God is going to encourage me through the transitions that I have coming up. You might uh, get a popsicle stick or a craft stick or a piece of wood and write the name of someone that you want to pray for or some situation. But feel free to do that. And feel free to just carry that stick with you and know that God encourages you and that you can encourage maybe the person you're praying for, the situation you're praying for. But let's, let's end with a word of prayer this morning. Lord, we thank you that you are an encouraging God. We know that life can have so many challenges and so many things that make us afraid or make us sad or make us confused but that you are a God who encourages us. So Lord, we pray for the person or the situation that we have on our piece of the ship that we hang on to, and we encourage them with our prayers and with the promise of your presence. Be with all of us, Lord. We thank you that you are a God who loves us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So have a wonderful week. Remember, God encourages us. And we will see you next week for the next edition of Summer Saturday School. Love you. God bless you.